Hello and welcome back. Today I would like to show you one of the great new features in Cubasis 1.7. It's called Inter-App Audio. What it means is that you can communicate with other audio applications on your iPad and stream audio back and forth. In Cubasis you have three possibilities to use Inter-App Audio and I'll show you all of them. I have prepared a little project. Right now it just has one MIDI track that's connected to one of the built-in drum kits and an empty audio track. To get this tutorial started, I will just record a small drum pattern. I already have the MIDI track selected. I'll show you which instrument I'm using here. It's the Alan Morgan 8-bit kit number one. Let me just bring up the pads and enlarge them. I'll enable the click and then we're all set to actually start the recording. All right, that's enough for now. Let's just close the pads. And now we can see the drum pattern that I've recorded onto track one. So far so good. I haven't used any inter-app audio functionality yet. That's what I'm going to do now. I'll click on MIDI and add another MIDI track. I'll drag it just below the drum track. And right now it has the internal drum kit selected. Let's change that. I will just click on the instrument icon for track two. And this brings up all the instruments I have in Cubasis. But if you scroll up to the top, you can see that I also have another topic now called inter-app. And I will choose the Nanolog right here. Just click on it. And uh, you can see, there are two icons at the bottom now. Um, one is the analog icon and the other one is uh, the Cubasis icon, of course. And you can see that there's already an active connection between analog and Cubasis. And this works really neat now. What I'm doing is I'm sending MIDI data to the analog, and the analog is sending audio back to Cubasis. So it works pretty much like an instrument track that you know from Cubase. I can now tap on the Nanolog icon and this will take me to the Nanolog. By the way, this is a free new synthesizer that we've just released and uh, you can download it on the App Store. I can just drag it open and I have some basic transport controls and some basic information from Cubasis. Let me just load a preset I have already created. I'll just click on the preset list at the top and choose the preset inter-app and that's just a, a basic synthesizer sound. What I could do now is play the analog right here, but I can also click on the Cubasis icon and jump back to Cubasis and actually open up the keys and play the analog from right within Cubase. Let me just increase the size of the keyboard and we are ready to record. Okay, that's enough for now. Let me just close the keyboard. And now, as you can see, I have recorded MIDI notes onto a track in Cubasis, but the sound is actually produced by another application running parallel with Cubasis, the Nanolog. Okay, the sound of the Nanolog is not yet what I want. I want a little more distortion on that. So I'll make use of another possibility to use inter-app audio in Cubasis, and that is by using an insert effect. I will tap on Insert Effects on the Nanolog track and then right where it says Tap to Add Effect, I'll tap again. And you'll see that there's a new option at the bottom now, it's called Inter-App. Another tap 
And now I have the choice between all the applications that also support in-depth audio. I will choose the Amplitude Pre for now. It's already loaded. And now we can listen to the track, which again is MIDI data sent from Cubasis to a separate application, the Analog, which then sends the audio back, which is now also altered by the insert effect, the Amplitude. All right, that's more like it. So I have already shown you two ways to make use of interapp audio. There's a third one, and that's what I will use the audio track for. I will simply select the audio track and go to routing. And this is where I normally assign all the inputs, the audio inputs of Cubasis. Now, if I tap on where it says mono input, you can see that interapp also shows up in the audio inputs. I'll tap on that. And now choose the, the Yamaha synth arp and drum pad. The way it works now is that the Yamaha application is sending its audio onto this audio tracking Cubasis. And I can just jump to the application by tapping on the application's icon. What you can see here is, of course, the application itself. Plus, at the top, you can see that there are, again, a few icons to control Cubasis and also to jump back to Cubasis. As you have also seen for the Nanolog, just looked a little different. So let me just record a short phrase. I can start the recording right from here, from the application. I simply tap on the record button and I will also have the pre-count and everything, of course. Okay, now let me jump back to Cubasis by simply tapping on the Cubasis icon. As you can see, I now have what I've played in the Yamaha app as audio on my audio track. Now let's listen to all three tracks. Just to sum up, there are three ways to use Intap Audio and Cubasis. The first one being loading an instrument and playing it with the MIDI keyboard directly from within Cubasis. And you get, of course, the audio back also in Cubasis. It will show up in the mixer just like any other instrument. The second way is you can also use other audio applications as insert effects which is what I have done with the Amplitube Amp Simulation. And the third possibility is that you can actually record audio from another application directly onto an audio track in Cubasis. Thank you for listening. Have fun making music. Take care and until next time, bye bye.